we have a situation with two VTubers who have allegedly been scammed from a rigger. So let's get into this because this is going to be very long and all three parties involved have made documents talking about their sides. So this first started with Thorn the Gorgon who made this tweet on August 19th stating, Hi, today's my birthday. Let me tell you about how I lost $2,000 to at Mookie underscore TTB. Happy belated birthday, by the way. I'm really sorry that we're going to have to get into this. This is the full document that was made by Thorn and I will try to summarize this the best I can, but also read segments of their doc that I think is very helpful. Thorn wrote, it brings me no joy to write this doc. They did not want to ever have to write something like this. And they acknowledge that any choices they made were of their own volition. They wrote that I never want anybody to feel pity for me or the things I go through. We all go through different things. Anything that I mention on a more personal level, I will do so as I feel it's relevant to why I made the choices that I did. At the end of the day, this document is serving as my own personal experience and feelings. I will never tell you how to feel about something that happened nor will I try to make any side out to be an enemy. There is no enemy. We make our own decisions and acknowledge our own faults. We speak well of people's positive traits. I will do no less here. That being said, I will not tolerate any type of harassment or hatred of any kind to any party. And I do want to say again, please do not harass anybody involved. In a lot of scenarios, again, it's not very black and white. It's not like there is a hero and a villain. A lot of times, both sides are morally gray, and that's just kind of how things pan out. And Thorne added that there will be things that will be censored because there's personal information. So this document is broken up into 10 chapters with a disclaimer, chapters, background information that lets you give insights into Thorne's kind of like mental state and where they were at during the point of commissioning Mookie for the rig options and more of the stuff. So this was very, very clearly laid out, very well laid out. So for background information, Thorne had their model created by their artist Sick that was commissioned in 2022. In November 2023, the art was finished and they were looking for a rig. At the time, they were living month by month and Thorne's only option to make money was through content creation was because they're physically disabled, chronically ill, and don't own a car. They have linked proof as well, which I did look through. And again, I'm never the type of person that's kind of going to be like, prove your illnesses and prove this to me. Thorne did provide it and it looks very legitimate to me. So Thorne acknowledged my only option was to learn how to rig, which I had already been starting and learning basics as a hobby. This model was my future, the thing that I've been waiting for since starting content creation as Thorne in 2021. So here they add a lot of personal anecdotes. I will give you a TLDR, but again, it is on screen if you would like to read it for yourself. In November through January, everything fell apart and they had to take a long step away from content creation due to degrading mental health and stressors in their life, as well as trying to get the model rigged on top of that was even harder. Thorne and their partner decided that the best option were to put the rigging project down. So Thorne reached out to a wonderful rigger by the name of Bogey. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Bogey was one of six closest friends. So in the meantime, January 13th, Thorne had purchased a pre made adoptable zombie model from Mookie. If you guys aren't an artist and you don't know what that is, an adoptable is an artist will make a character or an art piece and then you can buy it. And if you buy it, you own it. You can't claim you drew it yourself. You know, that's not how that works, but you you can like buy the rights to that model, which is what happened here. Proof was attached in these screenshots as well. And Thorne stated that they absolutely loved the way it was rigged. They love the feeling. Here is an example with their DMs to Mookie stating, also she's drawn and rigged incredibly well. You did an amazing job. So on January 15th, Thorne let their audience know that they'll be using a new live 2D model that is not Thorne's designs and that they have found a rigger and they have a timeline for their official debut. So on January 16th, they had a doctor's appointment and they went to it. And unfortunately, they found 10 tumors in their arms and legs and they had to go through surgery. They ended up getting hospitalized for their mental health until they could determine that Thorne would not be a threat to themselves. Between January 20th and March 9th, Thorne noticed changes in their partner, Matt's mother. The mother's health was not doing really well and she had a stroke, unfortunately. And it was determined the stroke was terminal brain cancer. And unfortunately, on March 7th, Thorne's partner's mother had passed away. And I'm truly sorry for your loss. That is extremely sad. And then on April 9th, they received information that their aunt has also passed away. During early 2024, things were not looking great for Thorne. And Thorne wrote, I generally do not want to dwell on this topic. But before we get to the next chapter, I think it's important to remember that for me personally, my whole life and mental health crumbled around me. And due to all of the above events led to both myself and my partner unable to work steadily for weeks, even months. This will be an incredibly pivotal point when it comes to my timeline and even thought processes regarding this commission. So on to the next chapter of discussing options. As mentioned above, everything was very chaotic. The months have taken a hard toll on both my partner and my mental health. Thought processes in February 28th, the very end of February, Bogey's rigging schedule ended up pushing Thorne's rig out until March, which Thorne was completely fine with. But Thorne wrote that their partner, Matt, became a little impatient and wanted the model done as fast as possible. And Thorne 
wrote, for anybody worried after everything happened and life calmed down, my partner and I had many discussions regarding this. He came to realize that his perception of what goes into streaming, content creation, and live 2D rigging were extremely skewed. He was comparing it to the only work he had ever known, which is hard manual labor. And content creation just doesn't work like that. All he could see was work done faster equals quality and success. He no longer sees what I do in this way, thankfully. So everything is completely unstable and healthy between us as a reference point going forward. And he's extremely apologetic. So Thorne just wrote this paragraph, appreciation to their partner, Matt. We do have to acknowledge too, Matt unfortunately was suffering through the grief and loss of their mother. Definitely not going to add to their mental state and it would lead them to say and do things that they normally would be against their character. Please give some grace to Matt for that. So anyways, during the point, during that time though, when it was happening, Matt was kind of talking about wanting to get the rig done faster and Bogey unfortunately had to delay the rig. So in the beginning of March, on March 1st, Thorne reached out to Mookie on Twitter and added Mookie on Discord to communicate about potentially things playing together and maybe getting a rig. And on March 5th, they talked on Discord and had a Discord call. The timestamps are provided here. To summarize, Mookie mentioned how they loved Six art, which again, Sick was the artist for Thorne's model, and that it would be a dream rig for Mookie to be able to work on it. So they were talking and they were discussing quotes and payments. Mookie is again working in British pounds and Thorne is from the US. So this will be a little bit confusing. Mookie quoted Thorne at 1500 Thorne divided by 12 to get a payment of $125. Of course, there is a conversion rate. 1500 pounds is actually 1900 USD, a little bit over. And so Thorne completely acknowledges here that they made a mistake. This entire time, they kept thinking it was 1500 USD instead of 1500 British pounds, right? Mistakes happen. Sometimes you get confused, especially when it comes to working with people overseas, different time zones, different things can get confusing. My editor is German. And when we first started working together, we definitely had a whole bunch of issues of me paying him. It wasn't because I was trying to scam him out of money. Just converting things from USD to euros was confusing. And then PayPal was taking a lot of fees. We've eventually worked it out, but it, there's definitely a lot of kinks that needs to be worked out in the processes when working with somebody who's international because there's all those extra conversions. So Thorne here said that when talking with Boogie, Boogie quoted Thorne at 1700 USD. Somewhere in translation, the conversion rates got lost. So Thorne made the mistake of thinking that Moogie was cheaper. Thorne thought that Moogie was 1500 USD. Boogie was 1700. Moogie is from the UK. So Moogie's rate was 1500 pounds or 1900 USD, which would actually make rigging commission more expensive. Thorne was confused, but Thorne, you know, again, was going through so much during this time so and mistakes happen you know it's unfortunate so thorn wrote and my partner who is incredibly worried about our lack of finances from us missing work highly encouraged me to go with the lower number which was 1500 incorrectly assuming it was in usd so this is why thorn chose to mookie instead of boogie the names do rhyme so it might be a little bit confusing thorn wrote so in the span of a few hours we went from the normal plan of boogie rigging my model to creating an entire plan and making the first payment the same night i sent boogie a message on discord and let her know what happened. I felt horrible. I felt like trash. And the last thing I wanted to do was hurt anybody. I'm not going to share those messages between her and I out of respect for her privacy and the fact that they were quite emotional and personal. But please note that since this all occurred, we have had numerous discussions regarding this time and are in good standing. She knows how deeply apologetic I am regarding my choices and mistakes, and I fully own up to them as well. She is also incredibly understanding of how my mental health at the time could have led to more impulsive decision making. I would also like to reiterate that just because I chose my final rigor based on what I thought to be the lower price at the time that I was no less excited to have Mookie rig my model. Thorne had also listed prices as well for proof and all the Discord message screenshots. So now we're on to the next chapter starting the rig, which again, Thorne provides incredible proof for. So despite Mookie stating that she was going to start the rig in March, it somehow ended up getting pushed back to the end of May. On May 29th, she sent me the message letting me know she was going to start the rigging process. And by May 30th, she sent me screenshots where she had completed the meshing process. At no point during any of this did she say she could not do my model or that she was unsure of her own abilities. She said that my model was the biggest she's ever worked on and she was nervous because it was a large file. But at this point, I had no reason to doubt her. I loved all of her work I've seen thus far and I had complete faith in her abilities and I didn't want her to stress in the slightest because her health was far more important to me. So the next day, Mookie sent a blink update, which Mookie reiterated that if there was ever anything I wanted to change to just let her know, which at the time really reassured me that I was safe to mention if there was something that wasn't how I wanted it. And Thorne was just mentioning how excited they were. So June 2nd, two days later, Mookie sent me a message that she started rigging my model's mouth. But Thorne said that when I first opened the video, my heart kind of sunk. I thought the mouth forms were a bit extreme. So in this 
this segment here, there's going to be a lot of back and forth essentially about the mouth rig. So I will just briefly summarize it. But here are examples of the mouth rig and there's a lot of back and forth that happens. So Thorne again said that they felt the mouth rigs were a bit too extreme. The movement was too large. And they told Mookie exactly that. They said that they felt the mouth was getting too wide, but they had a hard time putting what they were feeling into words. Thorne wrote, I made sure to reassure her that I wasn't upset in the slightest and that I was just trying to figure out how to best word what I was noticing. It sometimes can be hard to articulate what is wrong. I'm not saying wrong as in like it is objectively bad, but in the sense that Thorne as the recipient of the rig just had a different vision, right? It's each person's personal choice. Some people like more exaggerated rigs. Some people prefer more subtle rigs. It's personal preference. But again, the artist is always there to work with the commissioner to get the art to look and move the way the commissioner wants. So Mookie gets back with an update and Thorne could said that they couldn't tell any difference with the mouth shapes or what had been edited. So Thorne dug up an old Live 2D project file in November when they had been learning to rig and sent some examples. So Thorne reassured Mookie that they weren't trying to be nitpicky, that they just wanted to make sure they were comfortable with the mouth movements. And Thorne wrote, after watching the video I sent her, I kind of felt like Mookie's response to me just shrugged me off. I'm not sure how to describe it. It felt like my concerns weren't being heard. So here are the screenshots of the messages where Mookie says, of course, this is your model LMFAO. Let me watch this. Thorne says, okay. Mookie says, yeah, the only time I moved the top teeth was when I did the shrug. Otherwise the teeth are like, hello, basically just make the movements a lot more subtle. Also with the funnel, it's meant to be UO sound. So that's why it's so expressive. So I think here what they meant, why they felt blown off was that Mookie was trying to explain why it was so expressive, but Thorne was trying trying to explain how they didn't want it to be expressive. So it doesn't matter, I suppose, the reasoning as to why it's expressive if the commissioner Thorne didn't want it expressive in the first place. So they have been going back and forth about the mouth for a while. Mookie sent some more videos about edited parameters, stating she's changed everything. So here are the updated examples, one in Live 2D and then one in, I believe, VTuber Studio, you know, face tracking the show actually moving live time. So Thorne communicated back with Mookie, being honest, stating that the parameters still look too exaggerated and Thorne acknowledged that they didn't do a good job of explaining their thoughts. Thorne wrote, I truly think that overall it was looking a lot better and I thought we were on a better track, but there were still things I didn't like that much and I was having a hard time getting those thoughts across. And Thorne mentioned that they felt anxious about talking about why they didn't like something because of bad past experiences, which I think we can all agree with. It can definitely be hard to voice your opinion being like, hey, I don't like this, especially if it's to an artist that you do have good relationships with. So Mookie didn't respond and just sent an 11 second video with no context. Thorne assumption was this is just to show the funnel parameter which is the mouth making this motion also i'm gonna caveat right here too i have experienced you know using live 2d to animate emotes i've never rigged a vtuber model so my limitations do stop short here i try to always explain things in like the most dumbed down terms possible for non-artists please forgive me if my explanations aren't going to be super clear because i've never rigged a vtuber model i only animate emotes in live 2d if you don't know what parameters are that's what each row is each of these little dots is a single parameter that the rigger then has to control and the parameter moves you know different elements there'll be a parameter for maybe like you know the mouth squishing there'll be a parameter for the mouth opening there'll be a parameter for the teeth moving etc even minuscule object that moves element that moves will have a parameter associated with it so thorn asked a voice call and mookie stated i'm a little anxious i really don't know how much more subtle i can make it without your model being able to pronounce u and o in terms of the mouth rig the mouth rig is rigged to move in the same way a human's mouth would when you talk your mouth will make different expressions if you say you purses if you say oh your mouth also purses like puckering up a little bit and as a result for the vtuber model to look natural when it's talking you need to rig the mouth to make that like pursing shape that o shape which is where mookie is coming from mookie is probably from as an artist hey you know i know that you do want it more subtle i tried i don't know how much more subtle to make it without it not looking correct if it was speaking so i think this is just a disconnect between what the vtuber thought wants and what Mookie as an artist thinks is going to look best from an artistic perspective. But let's not forget also that Thorne themselves also has VTuber, VTuber rigging experience as well. So Thorne is not coming straight guns blazing, no experience being like, make it look like this without any
any logic or reasoning behind it. Thorn does have VTube rigging experience as well. And Mookie sent another update with extra changes and Thorn was really happy. They stated that it was looking a lot closer to what they were looking for. And there was a little adjustment I would make by pushing the bottom lip ever so slightly and the top lip up a small amount as well. But it was so close and I was a lot more happy with the funnel in this shape. I sent her a screenshot of the model I was working on rigging and the funnel parameter that I used, which I absolutely loved. And I was hoping she would be able to use it as a reference. So here is an example here, which as you can see is much more subtle in the O. Instead of it being like a O, oh, it's more like the mouth is much wider, the lips do not go up as high. Personally, for me, I'm not saying anything is like art, right or wrong in the artist world. I personally like more subtle mouth rigs. Thorn scent would actually be if I were to make a VTuber model, what I would prefer for a mouth rig in terms of the funnel shape. And I think that was the big disconnect here. The big thing they kept trying to go back and forth on is in the original rig, if we see here, when they're talking, the lips go so far up and down, like so open when it's talking it's not a bad thing some people do like that but thorn just was not looking for that specifically thorn wanted the mouth much more smaller but thorn added this will not be the only time during this experience that she would receive exact references and would refuse to use them so at around 12 a.m mookie acknowledged the examples that were sent and was like yep i get what you mean i'll change it tomorrow as a side note i was extremely diligent on making my payments and had been doing so steadily for two months i ended up needing to push my payment back by one week because i was in recovery from surgery i was able to get my surgery to remove the 10 tumors from my arms and legs and it was incredibly hard to even sit at the computer or type at a keyboard. I was really hoping she would understand, and I had plans on making the payment as soon as possible, but she did guilt me for not being able to make it on time due to my surgery. Essentially, her words were, quote, do you know when you'll be able to pay last week's milestone? I have my phone bill to pay, which I absolutely understand, but at the end of the day, it's not my responsibility to make sure her bills are paid on time, especially when I'm recovering from a surgery, which left me with a three inch plus long incisions on each forearm and two much larger ones on my leg. I paid it immediately at that point, just so I wouldn't have to spend any extra time on my computer with pressure on my arms. I do have to say here, the one statement that I'm a little like, mm, about at the end of the day, it's not my responsibility to make sure her bills are paid on time. To be fair, Mookie was expecting the payment a week prior. So it is on you if you paid it a week late. There is that thing where was expecting payment. I do think, again, in this scenario, it's not like there's a villain, a hero, whatever, right? Thorne is going through surgery. They had surgery for 10 tumors, which must be very invasive and very painful. I hope their recovery went well. Thorne is really struggling and due to their health complications and everything going on in their life, they hadn't even been able to work. So of course their finances are tight, but also on Mookie's end too, they were expecting payment a week prior. So this is a very small thing amongst this large scenario that is happening. But I do think that it's um, a little bit not fair to state it's not my responsibility to make sure her bills are paid on time refer referring to the phone bill that is if Mookie was expecting a payment that should have been coming through but I digress so we're on to the next chapter of moving forward so here Thorne was much happy with the results and the progression of the mouth rig but they still weren't happy with all of the shapes Thorne felt like there was too much teeth showing and the shrug parameter was a little bit off and made the face and mouth look unnatural and they also felt like the teeth were moving side to side even though Mookie stating she never moved them however in her video Mookie seemed like she just wanted to stop working on the mouth altogether. She is very insistent that she didn't know what else she could even change. So Thorne adds, okay, you know, maybe we can move on to rigging other things and revisit the mouth because it can be tiring to work on the same thing over and over and over again without seemingly coming to a resolution. Thorne also adds that they were completely out of it due to antibiotics from infected surgical incisions. So again, they're going to be a little bit loopy, a little bit out of it. And they just wanted, you know, the rig to continue. And so later, Mookie added some extra horror toggles and Thorne loved it. And Thorne said how much they loved how the rig was coming along and how they apologized for how nitpicky they were being. Muki once again reassured Thorne, being like, don't worry about it. It's your model, your character. You tell me what you want and I will do my job. Which again, this is what happens when you rig a VTuber model, right? This is not just like a standard art piece. It's not a skeb, right? A VTuber model is expensive. It's thousands and thousands of dollars. And this is going to be a model that the VTuber is going to use every single day when they make content, when they stream. They're going to see it day in, day out. And it's not something they change very frequently, right? Some VTubers, they'll use the same model for years. So of course, you're going to want the model from a VTuber perspective to be perfect. And of course, from an artist perspective, I would hope that you would do your due diligence and all your power to make the model as perfect as possible for the VTuber. Of course, I'm not discounting the fact that there are definitely nightmare clients that have extreme asks that is basically impossible to create. So I'm not trying to discount that whatsoever. But it seems like Thorne, through all of the screenshots, the examples, has been very nice, very respectful. 
And Mookie has been very communicative as well with very timely updates. So things besides like the back and forth in the mouth seem to be going well. Thorne wrote, however, the way she brushed my feelings off the previous day was how she would continue to treat me when I did bring things up. She even told me that she had somebody cancel an entire rig commission previously, and I was pretty shocked. I felt really bad for her at the time. At this point in time, I now know who that client was and exactly why they canceled. I'm not going to disclose who this person is as that, that's not my place to do so. If they ever wish to speak about their experience, I will support them as I have seen with my own eyes how Mookie treats her artist disrespectfully. So on June 4th, Mookie added a head tilt angle update with expressions as well, but they felt frustrated they couldn't get the tears to work properly. Thorne tried adding some suggestions, but then decided that, you know, maybe stepping away from this and revisiting the head tilt stuff later would be better. So on June 5th, Thorne was hoping that a, a little break would be helpful, but Mookie was getting even more frustrated. She was highly agitated and kept going back to the statement of, I just don't know how to fix it, end quote. Thorne gave Mookie a bunch of reinsurances and noted that they noticed the eyes being a little bit stretched out and some chin and jaw warpings, but it didn't seem like a good time to mention anything because of how frustrated and overloaded Mookie felt. So then there was a group chat that was made. This was a group chat between Mookie, Sick, and Thorne and... Thorn was trying to add all the screenshots, but they do acknowledge that some things may be out of order. So on June 9th, Thorn received new video updates and Thorn wasn't really satisfied with the head angles. They felt like the left and right X angles were definitely warped and skewed and they were sending this entire time their artist sick updates. So sick even had full references of head angles and mouth forms ready for Thorn to give. So here are the examples of the head tilts that Thorn added. And there's definitely distortion errors, right? Notably, like the jaw is protruding a lot with the head movement that's definitely one that I noticed. But again, I don't want to sit here and nitpick somebody's art, right? This is also a work in progress because this was the before fix video. The artist acknowledged there were distortion errors as well. So Sick wanted to provide Mookie some references and they were trying to get into a group chat together. Mookie wasn't really a big fan of the group chat. They were kind of apprehensive about it, but they get into a group chat and they're trying to like go back and forth. And Thorn felt like Mookie was being really dismissive during the entire group chat. And Mookie wrote word for word, it just feels like I spent the better part of 12 to 15 hours on the head and making changes is going to be difficult because I'll have to redo everything again. If I move the head, I have to redo the eyes, nose, mouth, brows, ears, and facial details. I definitely understand it's really frustrating if you do something and you have to completely redo all of your work. Mookie's headspace during this time is probably not great either because it's gonna be really frustrating and it sucks. And I feel like this is a scenario where if there was, you know, references, X, Y angle references made by the artist, I feel like this should have been given earlier. But again, I don't think this is necessarily on Thorne as well. Thorne had already used a model from Mookie and they really love the rig and they love the way it looked like. So I'm sure they were assuming that this rig was going to look and have a similar quality to what they were used to because they've already used a model from Mookie. So I do think it just kind of sucks all around. And Thorne was writing how they were really anxious and how they were really uncomfortable. They felt like this was another example of how Mookie didn't want to fix things or acknowledge that they messed up. And Thorne wrote, I felt horrible. I felt like a monster. I was in tears just trying so hard to make this work. But with each passing message, I was getting more uncomfortable with the way Mookie was treating my artist and myself. So a screen screenshot of the examples. Thorne stated that there was a trend in Mookie where Mookie would say things that hurt you or make you feel like you're the problem and then she'll apologize and use something in her personal life as an excuse for the way she treats you. This is psychological manipulation. I generally don't even think Mookie realizes that she does this or how it affects those around her, but it's something I've experienced many times and I can tell when it's happening. Even if it's unintentional, acting this way towards others has a large effect on how they feel and approach situations. This initial back and forth between the head distortion was actually in DMs, Mookie and Thorne. Sick wasn't in these DMs yet. Sick wasn't in this conversation yet the artist that is so then they make that group chat together and this is the group chat between the three of them sick mookie and thorn so sick sent the, the first message also sent head tilt examples and thorn felt like mookie's response was passive aggressive and disrespectful he had written i've done the majority of the head just need to rig the hair so it's a little frustrating that this has only come to light but i'll do my best thank you for the refs i feel like this isn't passive aggressive obviously mookie is going to be frustrated they're gonna have to redo a lot of work but they seem respectful but again like this is only one message out of like tons and tons of messages in their conversations. Thorne also offered to pay Mookie more for their time, which Thorne acknowledges later that this was not something that they should have done. Like it's not the VTuber's job to pay the artist for more time when the artist was the one who didn't make it correctly, if that makes sense. And Sick reached out to Thorne privately being like, hey, the Mookie's messages made me feel really bad. And they looked through their TOS, which states that any changes would be totally fine as long as we let her know what we would like to be adjusted. So Thorne constantly told Mookie, hey, you know, take your time with it. But Thorne felt that Mookie just wanted to rush the rig, wanted to finish it as fast as possible. So Mookie sent head angle updates and Thorne felt like there were still distortion errors, but that it was looking better. So Mookie reached back out and stated, oh, don't worry about paying extra. Like it's totally okay. 
And then they sent another message. So this is the message from Mookie to Thorn. Hey Thorn, I think before I move on, we need to fully agree on finished parts like the mouth and face. I will admit that it's a bit of a stab in the heart when you say you really like something. And when I've moved on to something else entirely, then I have to go all the way back to the very first parts. Like with the mouth, when I re-rig the basic mouth forms again. I also have to go in and adjust the V-bridger parts along with the XY angles of those parameter sides. It's not so simple as just moving it as much as I wish it was, LOL. To avoid frustration and anxiety, I would like to know a definite take on the parts I would like to move on from if that's okay. I promise I'm not mad. I just want us to have good communication. Heart. I also don't want to let you down and give you something you don't like. I promise I'm trying my best. This is the best hair I've ever rigged. I'm also really anxious because your artist has a huge following and I don't want to blow any sort of reputation I have as a rigger. This is my livelihood. And at least whilst I'm in university, I rely on comms a lot. I'm sorry if I've caused any panic or frustration on your end too. Working on such a big model is terrifying for me, lol. I'm still a baby in rigger perspective. Please don't have any bad feelings towards me. I genuinely want you to have a good experience. Prayer. So, I mean, this sounds really respectable from from Mookie, I mean, the, I feel like this was this message makes sense, you know, like as a rigger, you want to make sure, hey, let's just reevaluate where we stand in terms of where the model is. Like, what are you good with? What can we move on from? Or what are you still not down for? I like this message. I think this is very fair. Thorn wrote, trying to find words to explain how this message made me feel as a client is extremely hard. She had only been rigging my model for around five days or so, less than a full week. But the way she was talking as if decisions need to be finalized right then and there. Up until this point, I never fully greenlit anything about the rig so far. I told her there are parts that look great and I told her there are parts that it would be best to step away from for a while as she wasn't able to fix them. But at no point did I consider any of the pieces done. And the fact that she could say that and think that we could then move on while the mouth was looking worse as the head angles were being worked on and then her face was literally distorting was heartbreaking. To top it all off, during the message, she seemed to care a lot more about upsetting my artist because of her following on social media than she did the quality of work she was providing. It seemed like her main focus was not on ruining her reputation as a rigger, which is such an uncomfortable thing to put on my shoulders. And for feeling this way she had done nothing but treat my artist with disrespect up until this point i do think that the whole thing of like i don't want to ruin my reputation as a rigger is like hard to put on the vtuber right obviously understand from mookie's perspective they want to maintain a good reputation because you, as an artist your reputation is everything you don't get clients if you have a bad rep right they want a good reputation but on the other hand this puts pressure on thorn to accept things they don't want to accept you know what i mean like oh if you speak out because we had a bad experience you're ruining my reputation I had a bad experience you know it puts pressure on Thorne to not talk about things that they felt were bad or that needed to be worked on in their experience with Mookie for fear of ruining Mookie's reputation. So Thorne felt completely lost, defeated, disrespected, and they felt like they were being guilt tripped. They wanted to comfort Mookie. They told her that they would be down to hop on a call to talk about anything or to even type it out. So Mookie wrote, I see. I'm sorry I didn't mean to cause anything. I just really feel under pressure trying to make two different people happy because initially you said you were happy with how things looked and now Sick is saying that she wants me to change things again. Again, but I had already moved on to the hair and the snakes. I thought I was finished with the face. I definitely think there must have been some communication breakdown here with Mookie thinking that they were done with the mouth or the face, etc. Thorne this entire time has stated they were not fully satisfied with it, that they wanted things changed, but that they acknowledged they were willing to let Mookie move on to other things because it can be frustrating to work on the same thing over and over and over again without seemingly getting a solution. Thorne wrote, you can clearly see through all of our previous messages throughout this entire document, at no point in time did I ever say that the work was perfect enough to be considered done. I mean, I agree. I told her the mouth was looking great and that there were some things, but even she said, quote, we can come back to it, end quote. She stopped working on the tears because they were giving her so much trouble and said, quote, we can come back to it, end quote. She stopped working on the head angles for the same reason. This is the part we could never get past. Thorn wrote, anybody who rigs live 2D models professionally can tell you that this is not appropriate behavior towards a client and that mistakes can happen at any point during the rig. The model isn't done till all of it is done. I had to explain to Mookie that just because I liked or was happy with some parts doesn't mean I was happy with all parts. Putting me on the spot and asking me to decide right then and there if something is done when I had only ever seen small clips of the model made me feel horrible. So here Thorne is stating everything that they just wrote out but this was in DMs. So at some point there was a, a video of the face updates that was sent and Thorne asked hey you know can I let my artist sick check the mouth forms because sick is used to drawing mouths a specific way. So they gave updates about the angles and then you know things that they felt like were off. So this is where a lot of back and forth happened between Thorne and Mookie. So Thorne was trying to reassure Mookie but Mookie wanted to step away from the head angles and come back to it later. But Thorne was worried that, hey, if you once again step away from the head angles, are you going to turn around and be like, oh, you said it was okay, so let's move on to something else, you know? Which was exactly what happened with the mouth and the tears. Thorne wrote, she also mentioned that, quote, most people just say, okay, yeah, and then when it comes to finishing the model, they call things out, end quote. To be honest, this made me really worry about how many people got to the end of their models with errors and issues that she didn't want to fix. So I'm guessing it's instead of updating step by step, like, hey, is the mouth okay? Is the eyes okay? That Mookie is stating, allegedly, that people 
people would just wait for the entire rig to be completed. And then once everything is done, be like, oh, can you change the eyes? Can you change the mouth? Da, 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 da. Again, I've never rigged a VTuber model, but I've animated emotes. I personally think step-by-step -step updates is easier than final updates, as in wait for everything to be done and then let's get updates at the very end because that could involve you changing an astronomical amount of things. With VTuber models, like one thing affects another. If you change like certain aspects of like a hair clip, it would also affect like the hair below, etc. So I feel like it's much harder to wait till the end, but that's just me. So here, Thorne was incredibly honest with Mookie, stating that at this current point, I wouldn't feel comfortable using the model because a lot of elements aren't up to my liking. That Thorne was trying to reassure Mookie, stating I really believe in her, and that Thorne understands Mookie has only been rigging for a year. Thorne realized at some point in this conversation that they've never actually seen a model Mookie has rigged of somebody else's art. In VTuber art world, you have artists who make draw the models, you have riggers who make the models move, and some people extremely talented can do both. Previous model, the zombie one that Thorne was using from Mookie was a model that Mookie drew and rigged themselves. So Mookie did both the art and the new rig that Mookie is getting. Obviously, sick as the artist. So Mookie is just the rigger. Mookie did not do the art for this model. Through screenshots, etc., Thorne saw that Mookie basically word for word said, quote, models not drawn by me will always be of a lesser quality, end quote. And this is something that would not be disclosed until after the fact and never to me personally. And Thorne once again apologizes if any screenshots are out of order because a lot of stuff happened in just two days and they're trying to piece everything together. So some videos were sent but then deleted so the order might be out. But Thorne basically was updating that hey, you know, changes to the mouth and stuff like that. I think we could be getting the model to a really, really good place and I'm really excited. Here are some angle examples and some more communication. And I do want to acknowledge here, like Thorne sounds like they've been really kind of like helpful this entire time. Like they seem very nice when they're talking about changes they want. So Thorne felt like the conversation was kind of glossing over the face changes and that Mookie was moving on to things like the hair and the snakes. So Thorne was asking Mookie for a screenshot of the model with the mouth completely open and closed in a frown shape because they had some changes they wanted to make with those shapes. But once again, Thorne felt like Mookie was hesitant about these changes. So Sick provided a whole bunch of reference images, as you can see here. And Thorne felt like Mookie was giving more excuses as to why they couldn't make the mouth move the way they wanted it to move. But here were some updates that were sent. This part is interesting though. So there are some back and forth messages. And then Mookie was reaching out to Thorne asking for, er for payments, even if they were early, so that she could get what she needed. And Thorne wrote that they have no problem helping people out they're not financially stable enough to do so often, but even if it's inconvenient to them, they normally would choose to help somebody out if they need it. Thorne felt like it was getting to a point where they were being held financially responsible for Mookie's purchases. So in the DMs, Mookie says, Hey Thorne, I'm going to have to buy a new mouse. I was trying so hard to keep my current one going, but it's gotten to the point where it triple clicks now. I've had this mouth for four and a half years. With the next payment you send, I will order a new mouse. And then later a screenshot, Hey Thorne, thank you for the milestone payment. I'm getting this mouse with a screenshot of a Razer mouse for $80. So Thorne was asking for a work in progress model file so they could test it in VTuber Studio. They added that this is not something they normally ask for, but that they felt like things still weren't kind of getting to where they wanted it to look like. So they added more changes they wanted with the nose, mouth shape changes. Mookie was willing to send over the work in progress file and they were in the middle of a move, which Thorne was being very understanding of. And Thorne stated that they felt really good about the rig so far and they had a lot of faith that in time they would be able to sort out the small adjustments that needed to be made. Mookie wrote, thank you, I appreciate it. I have some September deadlines, but other than that, I have nothing else to do. I want you to be happy happy with what you receive and I'm getting a bit nervous that I'm not going to be, be able to give you exactly what you want. That's an understatement. I already feel unable to give you what you're asking. Pleading face. And that's really sad. I felt so defeated when I received this message. All of the hopeful feelings about our progress were starting to be slowly filled with doubt. She felt unable to give me what I was asking, but all I was asking was for two of the mouth shapes to be slightly adjusted and for the head angles to be adjusted closer to my reference. I don't feel like that's a crazy amount to ask, nor an impossible task. I just didn't want my model to have a face that became warped and distorted. I just wanted her her to look normal. Thorne wanted to try to take as much burden off of Mookie's shoulders as possible. They even offered to look at the live 2D file and see if they could test things out or attempt some things on their own practice rig because again, like I mentioned, Thorne does have experience with live 2D rigging and the bridger. Now we're on to the main part of this, which is having their rig. So Mookie's self-doubt unfortunately did not resolve. Mookie felt that the mouth shapes that Thorne was looking for was impossible to create with V-Bridger. Although Thorne wrote that they previously have done it with very little experience in live 2D rigging. So Thorne felt like it was more like Mookie didn't want to do it rather than not being able to do it, if that makes sense. So Thorne wrote, I generally think she wanted me to settle for how the model was at the time because she kept bringing up how I wanted it to be perfect. That was never my intention. I only wanted her to look nice and good. I wanted my artist to be happy. I wanted to be happy using her when she was done. The only quality I was expecting
expecting was normal quality. I didn't want there to be random screenshots of my stream where my model looked really warped. I didn't want somebody to pause my videos and make memes about the distortion in my face. So Thorne asked for the Live 2D working file, the file where Mookie was actually making all the changes in. They could go in and try to make changes to see is it like actually impossible, etc. And Thorne felt like because they paid 2K for the model, it should have never come down to them trying to fix their own broken model. And so in DMs, things were getting worse and Mookie wrote, it's completely up to you and I would completely understand if you would like a refund and to find somebody else. This is the Live 2D files. And Thorne wants to note that they never once wanted a refund. They never brought up a cancellation. They never wanted Mookie to stop working. They just wanted a couple things changed. And so Mookie's self-doubt was getting even worse. They were feeling really unsure and they even wanted to take Live 2D rigging courses to try to improve. Acknowledges that it's admirable, but Mookie mentioned that they weren't going to be able to afford it and they might need to take on emergency comms to afford it. And then Thorne felt like this once again was Mookie trying to make them financially responsible. As in, it was Thorne's responsibility to pay her more so that she could afford an expensive rigging course. So after a couple of days, Thorne was worrying about Mookie, so they reached out again. And then Thorne asked, do you think the head and face angles and mouth open shape is something you'll be able to figure out how to fix? Mookie says, yeah, besides with the mouth forms, I literally cannot control what the mouth does when it's working with all the other V bridger parameters. I can try, but when your face moves in certain ways, it will shrug, jaw open, mouth X and such. And Thorne felt like these were more excuses. So Thorne then looked at the actual live 2D working file and they felt upset about how things were rigged and the overall quality of work that were done. And Thorne put all of their feelings on the table. So in the DMs, Thorne wrote, I'm going to be a little bit honest and I know it sucks. Trust me, I understand how complex V Bridger is. I rigged it before, but ultimately V Bridger will always follow the creative mouth open and mouth form parameters. And that's what need to be adjusted for the mouth shapes to look right. My mouth shapes are one of the most important things about my model, as are the head angles. They are arguably two of the most seen and useful features for model to have. And if I can't feel comfortable with them, then it's going to make it really hard for me to use the model at all. And I hate to say that, but I'm also sort of frustrated at this point. My confidence in the future is low, unfortunately. I think there's absolutely incredible parts of the model rigging so far. The hair movement, the augmented physics, the eye physics, I did notice that my eyes move at different speeds and separately from each other, which disappoints me, but I know that's an easier fix. I really don't want to ruin any chances at the friendship that we're building. And no matter what happens, I hope that doesn't happen. But I also need to be completely open about my feelings through the situation. And right now, as we stand, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable continuing this rig. These issues with the head and mouth are just incredibly important to me. And it's equally important to me that my model looks like the references that are provided by my artist, as ultimately this is as much her model as it is mine. She worked for a year plus on this model, put everything she had into it because it's her first VTuber child. My model is supposed to look a certain way and those references have been provided. My artist also reached out to me personally because she said that her art doesn't look like her art anymore. That the model no longer looks like Thorn when moving and speaking. And it absolutely kills me to say it, but I think she's right. I mean, these images don't look like Thorn. I do have to say, Thorn here wrote, I still believe that the model could be fixed, but in the DMs, Thorn wrote, and right now as we stand, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable continuing this rig. I feel like to me, that does kind of read like, you think it can't be fixed, if that makes sense. So it just it's just a small little contradiction. But again, I do want to acknowledge so many messages were sent. There's so many communications that happened. And so this is just like a small nuance in wording. I don't think this is a big thing to point out, but it, it is something that I do think is a little bit of a discrepancy, but it will happen when you're again making a 63 page doc trying to consolidate everything that happened over the course of six months. Mookie says, would you like me to completely restart? Could you ask your artist to make some refs for exactly how she wants the angles? The two she sent me are fine, but I need some references references for the corners. Given that I'm no longer stressed about the move, I can work harder and at a slower, more consistent pace. I really do want to continue with this rig thorn. I don't want things to be awkward between us and I'm sorry that I've rigged something you don't like. I do understand if you want to find a different rigger and I'm sorry that I can't give you what you want. And then they added a little while later, I've done some thinking. If you do think it would be best for you to go to somebody else, I completely understand. I feel really guilty because I couldn't give you what you wanted, but I completely understand wanting your model to be perfect, especially given your artist has worked with you for such a long time. I also feel awful knowing you've been with a few different riggers. I understand that I need to improve on my rigs, so I will not take on another rig until I have improved and can do something worthwhile that people will be happy with. You have made me realize my mistakes, and I also realize that if I spent 16 hours on something, it still feels and seems rushed. Usually, I don't offer refunds after more than three to five hours of work, but given the situation, I don't really want you paying for something you have no interest in and aren't comfortable with. So once I get enough money, I will partially refund you. I know it hasn't been a great experience, but I really do like you, Thorn, and I hope we can still be friends. I'm really sorry 
that it didn't work out. And this really sucks. I feel really bad for Mookie too. It really seems like Mookie is like learning. This is a big project. They were really excited, but it's snowballed out of their hands and it's become a big problem that they don't know how to fix anymore. And it really seems like they're enthusiastic on learning and being better. But Thorne was upset seeing those messages. That was exactly what they didn't want. Felt like they lost their money, their model, and that they didn't want Mookie to restart the model. They just wanted the model adjusted to where the issues were fixed. So again, Thorne felt really shocked that Mookie had canceled the commission on them and they were really surprised. And that they sent a message laying out all of their feelings, stating that they wanted nothing but the best for Mookie and that they acknowledged right now they're causing more pain and stress with this project that's helping and that they wanted Mookie just to feel better as in. And that they were trying to discuss refunds because Thorne did pay almost $2,000. And they want to acknowledge that they didn't see Mookie any differently as a person than before. Sometimes things just happen. So it seems like Thorne is being really understanding, stating they still want a friendship. I knew she wouldn't be able to refund me. So my entire savings that I invested in my model's rig was just gone in the blink of an eye. All I could do was cry and smile and nod and act like it was fine. I didn't have another choice. So there were some back and forths that were sent discussing the refunds. So Mookie paused the commission on VGen so they could refund Thorne. Thorne stated, I never agreed to only being refunded 750 pounds or 974. My commission cost me 1912, losing that much money when I received nothing in return. And it was never my idea to cancel the commission. Felt like a stab through the heart. It still does. Am I supposed to be okay with losing that much money for nothing? Am I wrong for feeling that's incredibly unfair? I feel like in this scenario, it really sucks because it's like, it's something where do you need two people to agree to cancel a commission as in the artist and VTuber should both agree? Can only one party agree to cancel it? You know, like in a breakup, both parties don't need to agree on a breakup, right? Only one person has to be like, I want to break up and it's over. I think the scenario is a little bit trickier, right? Because if you have an art piece and somebody's working on the art piece and then the artist doesn't want to do it anymore, I feel like you can't force the artist to make art they don't want to make. But in that scenario too, then how does the refund work, right? This is a very nuanced and messy situation. I'm curious as to what you guys think about how to resolve a situation like this. So on June 22nd, Mookie promised me that she would be giving me half of the funds for any commission she received until her total of 974 USD was paid. But days came and went and they never heard any responses. Thorne wrote, I never expected her to pay me back all in one go, but if she even sent me $20 a week, it would show me that she cares and that she's putting forth the effort to make it up to me. But it was radio, radio silent. Up until August 9th, when Mookie sent me an incredibly hateful and unprofessional message regarding a PayPal dispute she received. She immediately sent me a screenshot of her account and even though she asked if it was me, she started going off and accusing me of filing this dispute, which I never did. This wasn't my dispute and that wasn't even how much my charges were for. So it's not even logical to me that my total again was 1912 and the dispute was for 985 British pounds, which again, if you convert Orange Commission to pounds, it's 1500 pounds. At this point, I was incredibly blunt with her. My patience was so thin and I was getting very tired of being treated with such little respect. Mookie treated me with so much disrespect and so unprofessionally. I had no idea what was happening with her PayPal at the time, but I was not going to stand for the way she was behaving and accusing me. A side note as well, her message to me of her PayPal account absolutely included her client's full legal names and payment information. That makes me feel even worse about her level of professionalism towards her clients. Knowing that she could have sent someone a screenshot that completely doxed me, she did her other commissioners. It is not a good feeling. So they went back and forth on this and Mookie's like, what the F, I'm confused. You're the only person I owe money to. And Thorne is like, that's not even how much I paid. Mine was closer to 2K. And Mookie apologized. Sorry, I just assumed that's entirely my fault. I don't know what to do. Okay, I found out who it is. Wow, that's crazy. Again, I'm so sorry. And Thorne was stating that they felt tired of Mookie stating that they agreed on a refund of $974 when Thorne never agreed with anything. Thorne wrote, we never agreed on anything. And I stood my ground on the fact that it felt wrong considering she canceled the commission on me and offered me a refund when I wanted to let her continue rigging the project. Saying we agreed on any of it is a lie plain and simple all of our screenshots our entire convos are included whomever reads this can see i did not agree and i did not cancel on my own choice but again i do think in a scenario like this it's a little bit tricky if you want art made by an artist but the artist later on doesn't want to make the artwork what do you do i've never encountered a scenario like this but i do think in a scenario where if you are the artist and you don't want to work with the commission anymore should you get paid for the time that you put into it yes but i do think life is easier in the scenario if you full give a full refund I'm not saying Mookie should, right? Because there's a lot more nuance. But if you truly want to like wash your hands of the scenario, turn your brain off, give a full refund and then call it a day and then just put it past you, move on. If you're just going to like unilaterally on your end, cancel it. Again, this 
was such a nuanced scenario because 16 hours minimum from Mookie was put into this work and they should get paid for the 16 hours. It's so messy. I wonder how this could be fair because it's also not fair on Thorne to lose out on either $2,000 or $1,030 because they're going to lose out on $1,030 for a model they can't use like a rig they can't use sorry not the model so they went back and forth a little bit more on this Thorne stated what I just told you and Mookie apologized they stated that they can't pay the full amount because they worked on it for nearly 20 hours and that would mean they would have worked for free and two their TOS states that they don't give refunds after three hours of work but given the fact that I had done only the head I was willing to do a partial refund I physically cannot refund that money all at once neither can I refund the entirety of it and Mookie said that in the beginning they had four cancellations of rigs in the beginning of the summer including thorns and that it was really hard for them so there are more back and forths on August 9th, Mookie said that they would send Thorn half of their Donothon money. Then they said that, oh, maybe I can pay you back in October or November when I receive another rig commission. And Thorn wrote, throughout all of these messages, while she was accusing me of filing the dispute, she kept mentioning the phrase, quote, you could have sent me a message. You didn't send a single message, end quote. When our conversation was happening and when she was having the conversation with the person that truly did file the dispute, she made sure to professionally set her Discord status accordingly. With her status reading, how pathetic, not a single message. Then we get to the PayPal dispute. We will talk about their experience as well but another vtuber by the name of Gibai and Gibai wrote her own document and we will read that too. After talking with Gibai and other people, they came to the conclusion that this is a pattern of behavior for Mookie and that Thorne decided to file a PayPal dispute. Thorne did not want to be a bad person. They did not want to make anybody upset and they have never actually followed the dispute even though there were scenarios where they had commissions where they lost hundreds of dollars. So Thorne wrote, my total commission was $1,912.29. It was broken down into 12 installments, one per week. I never got to make my final 12th payment due to Mookie canceling my Com. With that one payment removed, it means I paid and lost a grand total of $1,752.94. But the PayPal dispute right now is currently up in air. Thorne provided a whole bunch of screenshots and extra documentation. So these are all screenshots proof of the PayPal dispute. And so this is Mookie's response, which I think is interesting. We're not going to read all of this, but Mookie wrote, I want to preface that Thorne had canceled the commission. I did not just stop working on it for no reason, which I think is interesting because Mookie was the one who actually canceled the commission. And they stated Thorne's model was not warped in any way I had done my best or maybe Thorne was the one who canceled it oh my god so Thorne wrote I canceled my rig because she first brought up that she didn't think she was capable of doing it I thought Mookie was the one who was like yeah it's better if you give it to somebody else let's do a partial refund so proof of distortion that was added so Mookie then followed up with their other response and then there was more responses added Mookie is stating it's not warped or distorted in any way I apologize for my words to sick and apparently Mookie only provided one piece of evidence and then Thorne made a video showcasing all of the errors they believe are in their model. It's the motion that things get a little odd. There's a little bit of warpage. Makes me really sad too. I don't I don't want to. But I'll also preface by saying that there's things I love about this model. There's things I love about the boat. I'm just going to try to show a dynamic range. The Oh yeah, that head tilt downwards. Now that puppeteering is done, just make some random faces. Um... Uh, it's definitely distorted. <laughs> oh, why does it twitch like that? That's crazy. He allegedly made her own video with a response. Mookie calls Thorn and Gibai liars. I'm coming down with something. So if I sound groggy, that is why. I'm not feeling very great. I first want to mention that I was not first to bring up that the commission should be canceled. In the messages that I've attached to this response, you can see via the date and timestamps that you were first to mention that you no longer wanted to continue the commission with me. After you sent the huge message, I responded trying to ask if you wanted me to start from scratch. However, that message went unnoticed or ignored. I'm not sure if you just never saw it, but you never responded to it. Really badly wanted to work on your model. I love your model and I love your company. I, I really, I really enjoyed you as a friend. I mean, I, I wanted to get to know you more. I think you're a cool person. I really do. And I was really willing to work on the project and completely restart and try again. But you were the first to mention that you no longer wanted to work with me. Therefore, I stopped. And after you'd expressed doubt within me, I, as the messages show, started doubting myself. I said that there is only so much I could do to edit the mouth rig. I, I could 
couldn't make things perfect because there are multiple parameters working together at once. After I'd sent you the videos and updates of the very last time that I had edited the work, you gave me the impression that you liked it. I'm a little bit confused on that aspect. So there was a mention about Gib here, which we will revisit because we haven't read Gib's statement yet. And then Thorne escalated the case to PayPal. So in conclusion, Thorne wrote that this has really impacted their mental health and they're trying to stand up for themselves and they're glad they made a better friends. Debut, unfortunately, has to be pushed back to 2025. So then Gib made a document. So let's read this as well. So the TLDR, it writes, in no way is it acceptable to send hate of any kind to this creator. This documentation is only to be used as a warning and to show my personal experience with the artist. Bullying of any kind is unacceptable and will not be tolerated by me. And they add that this is their first live 2D commissioned. So they commissioned Mookie on February 22nd for a half body for 901 USD and they started communicating on Discord. Extra context, Gib actually won the model in a giveaway. So they didn't feel super comfortable asking the artist for more toggles or changes because they didn't want to take advantage of the artist. And they agreed on a payment plan. So they agreed on a turnaround time between three to six months, but Gib acknowledges they probably should have given like an actual date. And they agreed to a $50 bi-weekly payment. So the art was officially finished March March 1st, which was a month before the agreed upon start date. I was able to give her the downloadable file on March 4th and she said the file looked great. And Mookie wrote, holy shit, this is separated beautifully. And then here, Gib on March 4th offers, hey, I could probably pay you in full uh, because I got a big tax refund. And let me just double check and wait until I actually get the money, which makes sense. And so Gib asked for extra toggles. They asked for Mookie to draw waving arm, dizzy eyes and sparkles and to rig wave dizzy eyes, sparkles and bigger booba and V Bridger for an, a grand total of 1,095 pounds or or i'm gonna round this up to 1400 usd so this is still for a half body and so four days later on march 8th mookie asked about any updates about the tax return because she wanted to send a proposal on march 9th mookie opened up about personal matters and on march 10th mookie asked if gib wanted her to start meshing the model and gib says if you have time and if she needed to send me the proposal she could and we agreed to make it one dollar and it was mookie's idea you can see here mookie says yes i'll just put the first milestone as one dollar the same day I paid one dollar she meshed the model and Gib says they don't know what that means it means I figured it has to do with rigging what meshing basically is is oh what's the best way I could explain this you're basically adding the framework for something to be moved to be warped so for live 2d again you animate art pieces right what meshing does is like you're adding the skeleton to the body and then you'd later move that skeleton and so Gib writes please note in her message she says quote minor inconvenience but it's no issue the artist has forgotten to separate some of the layers but that's okay I can just duplicate end quote please note that I had no clue what that meant because again for extra context, Gib has no live 2D experience, but Thorne did to put that into context, right? But she said it wasn't an issue and that she is the rigger and we just started. So I took her word for it. I take full responsibility for not asking more questions at this time. So as you can see, Mookie literally says minor inconvenience, but it's no issue. And then Mookie immediately sends the eye blink. Gib didn't expect it because they didn't pay anything off yet, but they weren't going to question it. So on March 13th, Mookie once again asked about the tax return situation and if they've gotten it because she was desperate for money. I have no issue with her asking as I was trying to be kind through the entire process. I even offered a hundred dollars right on the spot to help her out if I could, but making your financial issues, your client's issues is rude and unprofessional. So Mookie basically says, I'm a little desperate on money right now. I'm sorry if I sound rude. And Gib is stating, yeah, sometimes it takes up to two weeks. So on March 24th, Mookie once again asked about the tax refund. And Gib wrote, at that point, my patience was growing thin because initially we had agreed to only do the meshing and nothing more. And she chose to continue working on the model. I was just waiting for the funds to finalize in my bank. It's also still March and my commission wasn't supposed to start till April. I also think it's like weird that Mookie is pushing this much about the tax return. I feel like it's like you're playing with money you don't have. You know what I mean? Gib was only supposed to pay you $50. So, or $50 bi-weekly, that is. So to go from that to, hey, what about the $1,500? You know what I mean? Like you weren't supposed to get $1,500 in the first place. That was Gib being really nice about offering you their full tax refund. So Gib wrote, on the 25th, I told her that I could pay off the total balance on the 26th as I was busy. This is where I started to have some concerns, mainly because I was just told 10 days prior she was desperate for money for bills, but then said she wanted to go to a Melanie Martinez concert. Again, what she does with her money is her business, but it was hard to have sympathy for money issues. And then you're telling me that you want to go to a concert. And I absolutely agree to. Everybody can do with their money what they want. You can blow all of your money on concert tickets if that's truly your prerogative. But then when it affects other people's money or other people, you know what I mean? Like Mookie is asking Gib over and over again, what about your money? What about the tax refund? That's now affecting Gib because of financial choices you made. That's where then I would have an issue with it. So Mookie is stating in the DMs, Melanie Martinez concerts for the Trilogy Tour just went up and I want to see her last year, but I couldn't. You have just given me the chance to go to my first ever concert along with Bills, of course, LMAFAO. Gib adds to note, she said she would sweat the shit out of my model, which to 
to me implied there would be a lot of effort. On March 26, you can see I made the final payment and was told my commission was on the next priority list. And we see here the screenshot from VGen stating, thank you for your continued support. On April 12th, Mookie cracked her drawing tablet, but never told Gib it would be an issue. On the 18th, Mookie messaged Gib apologizing for delays due to prior commission in school. So between April 18th and May 7th, Gib wrote, I had received no updates about my commission, nor was I even sure it was being worked on. I just mentioned I was trying to work on things to get ready in June for my debut. It's important to note I was extremely stressed at this point and should have communicated that since it was May already and in her VGen turnaround time, the rig turnaround was three to six months. But again, I was trying to be really nice and understanding that people have lives and are human beings with emotions. On May 16th, Mookie told Gib that their rig would be started soon. And Gib was worried because Gib's like, yo, my debut is in June. And then on May 20th, Gib was asking for an update. Gib was asking for the file because their debut is again in June. Everything is scheduled and they had agreed to start the commission in April. Gib wrote, I essentially paid her in full for no work to be done on my model. Looking back, that is so incredibly unfair. And so Mookie is in the DMs. Mookie basically states, yeah, I can get it done by around the 7th. But if I can finish it before then, that's even better. I'm so sorry. I had to drop everything to focus focus on uni and get my work in. On May 22nd, Gib finally started getting updates. They got some toggles that Mookie drew and Gib loved the toggles. So here are the toggles. Gib loved them. And then Gib wrote that there was no issues with rigs up until the mouth. So Mookie wrote Gib, I'm having trouble with the mouth markings because they're all on one layer. I've tried duplicating and splitting the layer in Live 2D, but it's impossible to work with. But besides one other trick that they could potentially do, they're not sure how to work with it. Gib understood that, oh, you know, it could be, there could be reasons as to why it's hard. It wasn't a big deal. They just wanted the commission to be done. So Mookie sent an update. In the update, it was kind of like a head turn, but you could only really see the mouth and then the right eye, which was rigged and nothing else was rigged yet. So they couldn't see any errors yet. Mookie has sent another update on May 23rd and you can see the face isn't a complete moving part yet. So again, for Gib, it was hard to tell if there's any issues. Also on the 23rd, Mookie sent a final update of the face being completed and saying that the face is done. And Gib added, keep in mind the movements shown are very minimal and I didn't notice any issues up until the file was in my hands and used for an extensive amount of time. On the 24th, Mookie added a short hair toggle, which Gib never asked for and was never charged for. Mookie has sent updates, but Gibbs states that the updates were very fast and quick, so they couldn't see any errors. And this is also Gibbs' very first Live 2D model. So Gib, without a Live 2D model prior to this and with no Live 2D rigging or art experience, didn't know what issues to look out for. And so Gib was asking about the big booba toggle. Oh, so then Gib here wrote, I don't know if I missed it in the video, but is the bigger booba on there? And Mookie asked, I will admit that the way the shirt was drawn, it was really, really awkward to rig. It's literally just one big slab of shirt. So it's very deformed and warped sometimes of the boobs. It's so frustrating. But Gib was asking for the big booba toggle, the toggle to make it bigger. Whereas Mookie is just talking about, oh yeah, boobs are big lols. They go on some back and forth where Mookie is stating, yeah, I can't do the big booba toggle due to how the art was drawn. And they agreed on a subtle breathing toggle. Gib wasn't super satisfied with this, but the delivery date was only two weeks away, so there wasn't enough time for them to contact their artist. Gib wrote, again, I'm not trying to be rude or not understanding, but if the commission was started on time like it was supposed to, remember, it was supposed to start in April, odds are I would have been able to have this issue fixed with my artist. What I find interesting is there were no more updates from this point on. So in terms of me agreeing to the rig not needing changes, it was 90% just the upper half of the model with not much detail shown. And then in blue, Gib wrote, she says here that my shirt was all on one layer. In my Photoshop file, the buttons, ropes, etc., are all on separate layers. This is extremely important information. So they add a screenshot of the skulls. Oh, so each button is on its separate layer. So each button is separated. I'm curious about the other separation though. What about like the rope? Is it all one big chunk of like crisscross star or like each rope itself? The connection from the shoulder to the boob is one rope. And then the connection from the left shoulder to the other boob is the one toggle strand of rope, a separate layer, which is what it should be. Or is it one big chunk just all crisscross shoelace. That would make a difference. The final model was delivered on May 24th, which means the entire rigging process was completed May 22nd to 24th. Please remember that I did not agree or pay or even remotely ask for a rush fee or a rush project. So Gib knows they had some personal stuff. They couldn't look at the model. And Mookie asked again on the 27th that the model was okay. And Gib still couldn't look at it and that there was life stuff. So on June 12th, 15 days later, Gib was finally able to look at that model and they debuted on June 16th. There were some tech issues, but they 
assumed it was PC stuff. And then Gib wrote, the following day, people reached out to me about my model and had a couple questions that they noticed about the rigging, where they brought that issue to Mookie. Gib notes, I really didn't get to use my model completely until I did my debut, which I understand was my responsibility to look at prior. But since I had been so understanding of Mookie's timeline, I figured it wouldn't have been a huge deal. And also realistically, you're not going to know how your model behaves until you use it for a stream and are basically acting or puppeting your movements. I do agree too. And again, I do want to acknowledge Gib also again has no experience with live 2D models. This was their first model. So people who have models before or are artists probably know, let's check for this pose or this movement, etc. But Gib didn't know. So the easiest way to tell, obviously, is to test run your model in a stream, which is exactly what Gib did. So they mentioned a couple of issues. The first issue is the neck being really long when they look up, which is pretty bad. The second one is the ears detaching or floating off the head, which I can't see in these photos. The third issue is when the head looks down, they wanted more of the blacks of the eyes to show. The fourth one is when they turn, the rope is disconnecting. As you can see here, this rope is cutting into where the neck jewelry or the neck collar should be. And Gib added, I have attached photos of things I've noticed that was pointed out to me by others. I realized that when you sent me updates, I may not have noticed them or when you delivered the completed file, I really didn't know what to look for until I completely started using the model for streaming purposes. This is with using vBridger and iFocal map like you suggested. Oh, so, oh, as you can see here, the ear disconnects and then stretching with a body tilt with the skulls. And Mookie had agreed to changes, but Gib didn't want to use the model while I was still bugged. Gib wrote, I did try to use the model, I think one more time before deciding not to use her anymore. I was extremely embarrassed, especially knowing my community saw these issues, but I am grateful for them pointing out to me and telling me that I should bring it up to the artist. So Mookie adds that normally people say these things during the update phase. And I want to add, okay, I just want to add. When we read the statement Thorne had written, Mookie was like, oh, you know, like normally people just wait till the end and give updates. In the scenario with Gib, Gib waited till the end to give updates, you know, because again, Gib didn't really know what to look out for. They got updates. It looked fine to them in the beginning. And then when they used it, it, they realize, oh man, this stuff is kind of broken. And I will say here too, this is a scenario where this is not like, oh, it's Gibbs' fault for taking so long to let Mookie know. These are things that, in my opinion, a rigger should have never had happened. Like the in the current state the model is in, it's usable, yes, but it is broken. There is elements that need to be fixed. I feel like in a in a model's case, there should be no scenario where ears are detaching or the neck is elongating to this level. Errors that should have been fixed before this rig was even shipped and before this even this rig was even handed up and handed back to Gib. So I don't think it's a fault on Gib for not catching it. It should have never happened in the first place because the artist should have caught it. That's my personal take. I'm not a rigger. Mookie reached back out to Gib about their moving situation and that they would be able to fix their stuff shortly. During the time, Mookie also tweeted about closing rig commissions until she felt comfortable enough with her skill to return to them. But you felt comfortable enough charging industry standards. Gib wrote, on top of that, she brings up that she admits that she should have taken more time to work on my commission than the time she spent working on it. When she mentioned needing to redraw things, I didn't realize that meant actively editing my artist's art. Please note that me and my artist have talked about this completely and are still unsure what an over is when she said edit the layers. So they had some more conversations a day after Gib asked for changes. Mookie mentioned that they were in the middle of a move, that their PC wasn't stable and they're going to get PC fixes soon. And Gib is being respectful, stating, I really have no idea what a lot of it entails, I saw your tweets and messages and don't want you to feel obligated to rework mine since it was past your TOS. And Mookie says, don't worry, I don't mind going back and fixing things for you. And Mookie was actually talking about Thorne's commission here, stating, I'm stopping comms because it feels like no matter how much work I put into it, it seems rushed. I spent 16 hours on this current rig comm and they have just canceled and don't like what I've done. And Mookie wrote, I should have been a lot slower and focused more. After that, Mookie just went back to streaming and didn't talk to Gib again. Gib wrote, this was incredibly disheartening to me. Not only was my commission rushed, it was completed in two days and told, quote, I should have been a lot slower and focused more, end quote. That alone is you admitting that you rushed. I was incredibly understanding of her timeline and never made a fuss when I could have. And people were stating that Gib got overcharged. It's August 9th as of them writing this doc and it's been two months and they never received their comm. And then Gib remembered that they were given the actual Live 2D rig file from Mookie. So here they're showing improper angles. And then you can also see the ear floating and detaching from the head, which definitely the model should have never shipped like that. I gotta say the ear should have never been detached like that. Another example of the other ear detaching. 
And then the model in live 2D cubism getting put in random poses. Like, look at the neck, look at the jaw. And so Gib filed a chargeback. I understand it can never be easy to see somebody ask for their money back. I truthfully do not believe the product I received was worth the money I invested into it. How do you go from a three to six month process where you said you were a bit quicker and fit that into two days? And Gib in the PayPal dispute pointed out the errors. And they gave PayPal the timelines that we've read in this document. Mook responded back to Gib stating, this chargeback is incredibly unfair. I'm a forgetful person. A reminder would have been nice. The whole commission was complete and I do not do refunds when a commission is complete. But I have to say, you can say it's complete and be like, yep, it's done. But in my opinion, it's not completed because it's broken. You can argue little things if it's an artistic choice that you want to change, we can overlook, you know? Let's say hypothetically you were like, well, for the eye physics, I actually wanted, you know, the shine to go left to right instead of right to left and you've already communicated. That's a really minor detail. But ears detaching from the head is not complete. The model is completed when it's delivered at a quality that would be acceptable for most people. Obviously, again, there's people who ask for the moon and the stars, but I don't think this is the case, right? It sounds like Gib just wanted, you know, the string to not cut into the neck, the neck to not elongate like a giraffe, the ears to stay attached to the head, which is all stuff that should have been should have been done if the rig was done properly. I'm not trying to say Mookie is like an improper artist by any means, but turning over a rig also in two days is insane because that means um, even if Mookie were to work day and night, the rig took 48 hours, which is actually really fast for a rig. And obviously Mookie didn't work day and night, no sleep, nothing, you know, for 48 hours. So I'm guessing being generous if Mookie spent 12 hours a day on the rig, even 16, let's be generous to say 16, that's 32 hours on a rig, which is on the lower end for the amount of hours put into a rig. Still a lot, right? But still. And Gib here stating, I understand she believes the work has been completed, but it hasn't. There are still issues with the model that you never fixed. And to be honest with you, I shouldn't have to tell you to do your job when you're charging near industry standards for your services. You are the professional and I am the client. And I will agree, 1500 USD for a half body rig is industry standard or near industry standard. And apparently Mookie had a Trello in which Gib was blacklisted on the Trello. Mookie had changed their Discord status to how pathetic, not a single message, referring to Gib not sending a message before doing the chargeback. And that is really unprofessional. So Gib accidentally typed out layers because Gib was trying to search for messages between them. And then Mookie wrote, okay, but Gib, please understand you have caused me a panic attack. I cried and feel so hurt. Gib wrote, I didn't cause your panic attack. I didn't hurt you. Her own actions are what caused this to happen. I refuse to be taken advantage of or look like the bad guy in this situation because I know I am not. And then Mookie responded. She did respond via PayPal. In her response, she basically said that it was my fault I didn't say anything sooner, which is ironic because never once did I get on her for being late and rushing. Hiding behind a TOS to save your own skin is deplorable. You can't even own up to what you have done. I was recommended by friends to go to you and was told they were disgusted by your actions. I'm not trying to be heartless, but you stopped getting the nice version of me the minute you decided to lowball me and call me pathetic. Their legal name was redacted. And so basically Gib wrote, while I understand you have a TOS, I paid for the quality of a rig that you advertise via Twitter. They linked some examples and stated that on my rig, it was not like that. The head angle is not the same as your past work. It looks rushed and it was rushed because it was done in two days. And rigs normally take months, by the way. And so there are more back and forth. And so here in this response, Mookie is stating that the rig issues is actually due to the artist drawing it properly. And they basically wrote that, oh, it was easy to rig my own models because I knew how to format them. I don't have any examples on VGen of models I've rigged that were not my own art. And so Mookie wrote, after it was finished, you sent me a video of you using it. So I assumed that you'd be checking for issues then and that you hadn't found any. Then I thought that once you said everything went great with your debut of the new model, that was a clear confirmation that you were happy with it and that I could move on to other projects. At that point, the commission agreement was officially finished and I could shift my focus to other projects. And Mookie added that due to the feedback, it looked like nothing needed fixed. And that when they brought back stuff updated later about changes, they were happy to fix them. So Mookie apologized for the inappropriate status and that they were really stressed for fear of being thrown into debt due to the chargeback and stated that it was not Gibbs' responsibility to send a message, but it would have resolved a lot more stuff if Gibb did choose to do so. And Mookie added that it was never their intention to avoid fixing errors and that they're still more than happy to do so. And that some fixes do involve redrawing parts of the model because of layering issues from the artist and that they wanted a positive resolution. And Gibbs like, yeah, I mean, we did talk about issues with the shirt and the boobs, but there's like a lot of other errors, like, you know, the head turn, the neck, the ears, the string cutting into the neck that is 
not related to the error of cutting from the artist. And that in the beginning, you said, holy shit, this is separated beautifully. You know, Gib is under the assumption that there is no issues with the way the artist had separated and cut the layers. And so Gib is also pointing out the hypocrisy in Mookie, where Mookie agreed to start work in April and didn't actually start until the end of May. Because Mookie was like, oh, you know, you waited 15 days to get back to me. And then Gib was like, yeah, but I had life stuff. And Gib was like, I was understanding of your life stuff that made you postpone my commission for an entire month but you won't be understanding of me. And they added all of that information. But I'm confused here because Mookie adds, Mookie adds, your model was layered pretty well besides the shirt and ropes. My point is everything in your model file is merged. Your artist never left the shadows or lighting on different layers like I do to be able to add more depth. So wait, but that's what I'm confused about because then that means it's not cut well. You know what I mean? Like you said on one line that the art was cut well. And then on the next line, you're like, yeah, but the shadows and highlights were all on the same layer. That means it's not cut well. It should not be on the same layer. It should be separate layers. It's actually either or either it's cut well or it's not cut well but you said it was cut beautifully besides the shirt and ropes but then now you say that it's actually not because everything is merged together i just think it's interesting because here mookie is stating oh your model is very simple you have about three to four expressions and a single arm wave toggle and it's a half body yeah half bodies are easier to rig than full bodies because there's no legs and then they write my models are all full body and i put a hell of a lot of detail into them the way your artist layered your model is entirely different to how i layer mine the quality is going to be different blah 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 your model is one of the simplest models I've rigged besides a male model I rigged last year. By looking at those models, you can see that they're not as good quality as my own models. There's only so much I can do with models that are layered that way. But I do think I've never done a live 2D VTuber commission, etc. But I do think if it's a scenario where you look at the artwork and you're like, some changes need to be made so I can rig it at the quality I want to deliver. I feel like that should have been mentioned. Gib here is talking about everything that we just covered, basically stating, yeah, the whole shadows and lighting on different layers was weird to Gib because that was never mentioned prior. And Gib as this to me is unfair to say because if you need a specific layer style to recreate the rigs you're capable of, you should not be working on other people's art knowing this is a huge possibility if not a completely unavoidable one. And Gib is stating, why was none of this told to me at the beginning of my rigging process? That is a pretty big detail and it would be revealed immediately on trying to mesh the artwork. You would realize all the layers are wrong. And Gib adds, if you can recall the beginning of me reaching out for the comm before we got into detail, I specifically asked her if she felt comfortable working on other people's art. I will save you the time of scrolling all the way up and add, they added it. So it says, I've rigged three different models using another artist's art and those rigs turned out just the same as my art rigs, heart. I promise there's not much of a difference and I friggin' love working with other artists' art. That's a little bit odd. And Gib adds that there should have been a pricing difference. If you don't feel comfortable rigging other people's art, if you think it's not gonna look as good, then it should have been cheaper. And Gib points out another hypocrisy here with Mookie basically stating, oh, you know, I'm able to quickly work through simpler models and it's my normal workflow. But Gib is like, this is confusing because earlier you were apologetic and said, I should have been slower and focused more. So is it rushed? or is it actually your normal speed? And so Mookie did add a video of the changes in the process of making changes, but Gib doesn't feel comfortable at this point to that the model can ever look like what it was intended to look like and that they feel like they have no choice but to continue with the chargeback. So Gib adds some extra stuff at the end. Please let the record show through all of this creation of the rigging file. It has been shared with my artists and I've taken responsibility for where I fell short in all of this. But let me be perfectly clear. This all started when my fixes were not done. It escalated when she became hostile. No amount of I'm sorry will ever undo what you called me and how you spoke to me. Nor will I be sorry or cover up the lies you have told me through this process when I did not agree to just drop the matter you started to change your story and adding details that were never discussed throughout this entire process. I'm extremely disheartened to how this all played out. Let me be exceptionally clear. This artist is not a bad person. She should not be drowned in hate. I do not stand for that at all. Let this be a wake-up call to how you treat your clients and handle their commissions. Please note that these files have been looked at by two different riggers and not just my own eyes. They have also been looked at by other artists and VTubers. My own community members saw the flaws and were afraid to tell me for fear it would hurt my feelings. With all of those in mind, I think this video speaks for myself. So they do have a video, but it is lip syncing to music. I don't want to play it because it's probably going to be copyrighted, but they added screenshots so we can see. And as you can see, there's a bunch of errors, right? The neck is extremely long. Also, you can see here, the shirt isn't clipped fully to the body. So you can see a little bit of skin peeking out right here on the shirt. The shirt is kind of behaving weirdly here. I will again give benefit of the doubt to a lot of the clothing aspects of it, because if all of the shirt is one layer, it's going to be hard but this clipping on the side here should not have happened that is an easy fix i feel like even if everything is one layer again a lot of distortion on the side lean the really long neck another screenshot 
face distortion. I think here too, it looks like the ear might be detaching, but I'm not super sure because the hair is black and the ear is also black. Another example of the neck. We can see through the screenshots. It's a little bit buggy. So Gib adds Thorn's story as well. Gib concludes, I will never forget this experience. I will never get the money back I spent on this. I have peace knowing that I had the support of not only my friends, my community, but also another client. I am in no way asking for anybody to take sides, but I was tired of feeling like I could not openly talk about what happened. I want nothing more than to be able to move on from the situation. The dispute is over. I lost. It is what it is. To my community, I'm sorry. I was not honest about what was going on. I hope you can understand now why my model has not been used since the debut. They lost? But anyways, going back into Thorne's document, Thorne's document included this video. So that gives us context now into what who that model is. Never would have used her for a debut and she never would have greenlit the model to begin with. That were the case, Gib never would have used this. This is Gib's model. She's not broken. She's not. That were the case, Gib never would have used her for a debut and she never would have greenlit the model to begin with. To be honest, yeah, if, if that were the case, she never would have greenlit and she never would have debuted. She never would have used the model in other streams. You mentioned that she said that, that models drawn by someone else will be less quality. What Gib told you, she completely missed out context, which I think she has because when I was having that conversation with her, I was talking about layers and either she is lying, saying something else, or I don't know, but I was talking about layers. If Gib gave you that false quote, quote and claimed that I said that, that due to the way the artists, that her artists specifically, didn't layer the torso, practically impossible for me to rig this any better than I have. The, the, the shirt is one layer. It's one singular layer. The ropes, again, one layer. It was never cut into upper chest. That would have been fine. Two layers would have been fine for each. It was cut into one singular layer. That's why it looks so warped. I have given, I, I said that I would going back into this though i mean again mem human memory can be faulty too so i'm not trying to like say right maybe mookie like forgot some things they said or some things they wrote but they did right here the way your artist layered your model is entirely different to how i layered mine the quality is bound to be different blah 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 blah. you can read the rest your model is simple maybe the intent mookie's intent was not this but the way it reads to me is the way gib interpreted i read this as oh if other people make the art i can't draw it well or like i can't rig it as well that's the way i read it like they say here your artist never left the shadows so therefore i cannot give you as good quality but again i do feel like okay that is something you recognize the moment you open the file the moment you open your file you dig through the layers you're like wait all the shadows and highlights are on the same layer you recognize that immediately or or at the latest when you start meshing in live 2d then you'll realize wait a sec like i don't have to make separate ones for the shadows whatever what happens you will realize that so the fact that it was not mentioned hey by the way your artist drew the art in a specific way and it's gonna make it so that the rig isn't going to look as good as what something of artwork that I made could look like. So here are two options. It's not going to look as great. I can give you a discount because it's not going to look as good due to the way the artist drew it. There should also be a discount in my opinion too, because if you keep emphasizing the model is simple, it should also be cheaper because if you don't have to individually rig highlights and shadows, it's less work for you if they're all on one layer. But also secondly, you could present option B is that we get in contact with your artist and work something out to have them draw more elements of the art elements that I need to give it at the quality that you would want it to be. Option C, we get permission from your artist for me to redraw it. So there's three options here. I feel like that could have made this a lot better. That wasn't done. But I try and I'm trying to give benefit of the doubt here. I don't know how many VTubers Mookie has rigged. They do say they are a beginner artist, right? So also tr like beginner rigger, that is like a baby rigger. So to give benefit of doubt also, maybe they just didn't have enough experience with doing commissions to understand if this scenario arises, then I should handle it in this way. And this could just be also a large inexperience leading to a mishandling of these situations. Permission from her artist, but I only add to work. I don't uh, edit someone else's work. That's incredibly rude and disrespectful. I'm not gonna just edit someone else's work. Yeah, but you could ask permission. That is where Gibbs dispute lies. There is no such thing as her being broken or unusable. That is the basis of it. I asked Gibb when, when she first commissioned me because she asked for um, an arm toggle and a few other toggles like stars and um, I don't know which one, like spinny eyes and a wave and stuff like that. I had to add. So I don't, I don't take away. I don't cut. I don't modify. I only add. That is why I could not do anything more for the chest or the top. I'm trying to explain this in the best way I possibly can because I, I know it's a talking about models and stuff. Like, am I mistaken here? Because I've never made a VTuber model, right? I again animate in live 2D but I don't make VTuber models. Cutting up the shirt is actually adding to it because you have to draw more because stuff's missing. If the shirt's one layer, you need to separate into two. That's one to two. You need to draw more stuff to make it from one layer to two layers. So I feel like that's not taking away, but maybe I'm interpreting this differently. It's um, about your head angles. It's obviously my model. I wasn't very good at head angles. Um, I'm not terrible. I feel like that should have been disclosed or at least if you're not super confident in your abilities, mention it or give a discount. You know, I know VTuber artists 
artists who give discounts because they're new, they'll be like, hey, first ever model commission, like I'll do it for a couple hundred, which is much cheaper than a couple thousand, right? Because they're like, I know I'm new, you're gonna have to bear with me. But caveat for you is you get it much cheaper. If you're not confident enough in your skills to deliver industry level quality, then don't charge industry level prices. I still want you to get paid, of course, but just charge prices that would match the skill level you currently have. And I do think their model and everything, their rig on this model looks beautiful. But you know, as we can see with Gibbs model and Thorne's model, there were errors in it. I can't really move my head right now, but as you can see, my that gray and have some of the same issues that yours have with the deformation of the chin. Back here, I think what I did was I moved the chin way too much. And when the bridger works along with the head, it moves, if you understand what I mean. But I have learned that now. Um, I understand that now. Um, but since since the beginning of summer, I have taken quite a big, um, I haven't done anything to do with rigging besides an emote that I did for Azuri, but that was small and didn't really. My point is, since then, I have learned so much. I have become better with all of the issues you originally had with me rigging your model. And Holly's model is the one I'm currently working on and I can I can quickly show you everything I'm working on. Hold on. This is Holly's model. I'm sorry for her being a little nude. Um, I'm still very much early in the rigging process. She is turning out great. So, yeah, it looks um, really cute. That's Holly's model. But yeah, that's, it's a very, very, very messy, messy scenario. So under Thorne's tweet, Pin had written, Oh, Thorne, this is so much. This year has been beating all of our butts. You are a very well composed and explanative doc here. And it shows a lot to your character as a person. This is such an awful experience. I'm sorry you're going through it. August wrote, happy birthday, Thorne. You've been through so much. I really hope the chargeback goes through. And under Gibbe's tweet, people wrote, Kaza says, I'm so sorry you had to go through this, Gib. This is disappointing to see that they would go back and forth and say those things. The fact they knew there were problems but didn't say anything is crazy. Vera says the head angles, especially on the Y corners and floating of layers makes me so incredibly angry. I'm hoping you have a better experience with somebody more experienced and professional. Cho Hua Hua says, the way Mookie handled the situation is not professional at all. This is upsetting to see from the sidelines. From a rigorous POV, they were cutting corners and making excuses. They need a less destructive workflow to encourage easier revisions. Hope the best for you, Gib. And then to wrap everything up, Mookie made their own statement as well, writing, my response to the situation regarding Gibbe and Thorne. Please read below. I go by Mookie and this is my response to the current situation involving myself and my clients Gibbe and Thorne the Gorgon. First up, I would sincerely like to apologize for the pain and distress I've caused Thorne. Thorne's artist, sick, and Gibbe due to my unprofessionalism. After these posts were made, I consulted trusted friends and mentors who I knew would be honest about mistakes I've made and tell me what I should do to remedy the situation. Up until now, I tend to befriend those who commission me. I have learned that I need to separate business and friendship so that I don't bring my emotions and personal life issues into my conversation with clients. I now understand this may come across as me trying to manipulate people, even if it's never my intention. I'd like to mention that I have never labeled myself as a professional rigger. I am a university student who has been rigging for about a year of writing this. I am still learning and have always mentioned this publicly. At the time these two clients commissioned me, I've been taking comms for around seven to eight months. Beginning with the first two clients, she stated she was unaware that I wasn't very good at head angles. If she looked at my previously rigged models though, all of my rigs previous to when I have rigged her head, you can see the quality of my head angles are pretty consistent. When it comes to her model's mouth parameters, I had changed them so many times and copied the exact happy mouth open and sad mouth closed references other clients artists had given me. I became exhausted because I couldn't understand what I was doing wrong. Please understand this is not an excuse, just an explanation. From the moment this rig was cancelled, I was willing to give a refund once I was financially able to and try to communicate that during the PayPal dispute. That I was willing to refund all but a small portion of the commission fees. At least wanted minimum wage for my time spent working on the model post meshing, which would have been around £120 off the fees she paid. In total, I was willing to refund £1,250 or £1,600. That can't be right, unless I'm confused, because you kept mentioning that you would refund 750 I think it was 750 pounds. I'm even getting confused with the conversions now. I believe you wrote in Thorne's doc that you were willing to refund 750 pounds. Muki said it here, the agreed upon refund amount was 750 pounds. But then here you say you were willing to refund 1600. I'm not trying to nitpick the statement. It's just, I want numbers to match up and it's just not matching up. Because I believe the first person they're talking about here is Thorne. So they stated that they were unable to find a job. They had people cancel commissions, which made it even harder. They did a donothon, but because their PayPal account was negative, and due to the dispute locking the account, they can't access the Donathon money. So therefore, they have a hard time paying bills and rent, let alone refunding. So Muki adds as a client I am refunding, aka Thorne is completely aware about these and that Mookie told Thorne they would be able to refund them in about September. In the topic of the second client regarding Gib, Mookie says they asked multiple times throughout the process if anything needed to be changed and Gib didn't ask for any changes. It was only weeks later that they 
asked for things to be changed. It happened a month after the model files were sent. And after she brought it up, she said, oh, quote, after the commissions are finished, end quote. The client disputed for the full payment. And Mookie says, if the model was marked complete and if they say that the, the model is going swell and super good, then there's no grounds for disputing. So Mookie adds some important information. Mookie says that Gibbs document omits information where Gibbs says that she did not upload the model files or test it until June 12th. But then Mookie says that Gibb actually did test the model earlier. And Gibb wrote, I'm unsure as to why she left out this crucial detail, but I want to believe that she did not have malicious intent and that it slipped her mind or she didn't notice. Two wrongs don't make a right, so I want to give her the benefit of doubt on this one. I just felt it was unnecessary to clarify that she did test it out and sent positive feedback about the model on the 27th of May, 2024, which I took as the commission being a success and finished. Wait, I don't understand because, okay, Mookie says here, I just want to clarify that Gibb did test it out and gave positive feedback on the 27th. I think Mookie misread this on the 27th of May. Sorry, my schedule got a little whack and I haven't been home in two days. Some stuff happened. I promise I will check tonight, but I'm honestly so sure it's wonderful and there's no issues and it's work for you. This does not mean Gibb tested it. This means this translates, hey, I saw your updates and it looks good. So I'm sure that when I try it, it will also look good. This does not translate into I tried it and it looks good. You know what I mean? But I'm trying to give benefit of the doubt. There's so many messages that went through. So it, I feel like if you're reading a, a large conversation, it's easy to accidentally misread or misinterpret what is said. So Gibbe did not say they tried the model, but I can see how Mookie would have accidentally interpreted it that way. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. I take that back. Gibb says trying to upload it now on the 27th. Then Gibb says this is the best thing ever LMFAO on the 27th with a screenshot. So Gibb actually did test the model out. I thought Mook was misreading it at first, but that's not the case. Oh yeah. Maybe, maybe like Gibb accidentally left that out. Mookie wrote that it was a big misunderstanding. It was never their intention to scan it anybody and they thought it was done and they also added when one client was upset with the quality of work and claimed she was quote uncomfortable with continuing the rig end quote to me that was the cancellation which i also agree when i read through the conversation as well to me i interpreted that as canceling the rig and mookie wrote i was shocked to see that after she said that she claimed she still wanted me to continue i feel like that misunderstanding among many others led to the issue we have now i shouldn't have taken on a project i was not ready for at the time i took it on i thought i had the skills necessary to do thorns model justice but unfortunately i was unable to make her happy and i understand that and i'm willing to resolve that issue and yeah i agree i don't think that mookie is ill-intentioned in any way with this they're probably just in over their head they thought it looked really cool the art is beautiful so they probably were like oh pretty art let me try this out and then realized they were probably in over their head so here mookie basically acknowledged their discord status was passive aggressive and unprofessional but they were just frustrated and upset because one message could have resolved a lot of it but they were never reached out to again i do not think it was on gib to reach out to mookie to fix the model. I think that should have been on Mookie. It would have been nice, uh, a nice gesture to do so. And referring to the doxing, right, of sending the screenshot with somebody's information and the blurred out stuff is their names. Mookie wrote, I urge anybody who's worried about their PayPal details being shown like legal names to change your PayPal details if you're able to, because donos may show the donator's name. Oh, so the, the donations screenshot showed the names of people that donated to Mookie rather than people paid Mookie for commissions. I don't know if I'm interpreting this correctly. I don't think I'm interpreting this correctly. It doesn't seem like the question was answered. Did you leak information or did you not? Because they said, to preface, I know I should have blocked out names. The section blurred out says, send again. This is because those contacts showed our streamers I've recently sent coffee donations to. Okay, I get it. It did dox people, but it did not dox the clients. It did not dox Mookie's clients. It doxed the streamers Mookie donated to. So it was not doxing people who sent Mookie money. It was doxing people Mookie sent money to. Very trippy, but I feel like it doesn't change the fact that it still did dox people's information. Not the people that Thorne and Gib thought. It still was people. And I do agree that, yes, guys, by the way, in case you didn't know, if people send you money on PayPal and your PayPal has your name, they can still see your name. I feel like I tell you guys this, but I'm just reminding you again. And Mookie adds, I wish we had the ability to communicate effectively before things escalated from one extreme to the next. Had it not been blocked everywhere, I'd be able to send the missing proof mentioned. None of this needed to go public, especially with the disputes ongoing. Gib did say that the dispute concluded, but Mookie added a screenshot showing that the two disputes ongoing says waiting for buyer and under review. And then Mookie wrote, before I end this response, I'd like to note that despite Gibbe's document beginning with a note stating she will not tolerate any hate or bullying towards me, I have been the obvious target of tweets by her friends, not only referring to me in a mocking manner, but also directly mentioning or adding me multiple times in a way that's quite obviously hateful or meant to intimidate me or those who support me. Given they have been up for nearly an entire day as of this being written, I would assume that not even one of these targeted posts have been met with any pushback by Gibbe, which is upsetting given that the anti-hate statement at the very beginning of her document. These are the only posts I'm showing. This doesn't include a large back and forth, you know, with 
examples of messages. And these are messages from people who are friends. And Mookie adds, as the, all this being said, I have wanted to and still want to resolve this. I'm happy to refund the large majority of Thorne's paid commission fees, as I outlined earlier. A total refund of 1600 In Gibby's case, though, I have difficulty finding validity in her dispute, given how many times she tested the model and said she was happy with it, and how late she came back after it was finished to ask for changes. Changes that I agreed to do for free. Yes, it slipped my mind that it was my fault, but it, I did fully intend to fix the issues and still was willing to even when the dispute began. The best I can offer Gibby is to fix the things she's asked for, as I originally agreed I would. I will do so to the best of my ability and with the model artist's permission. I will add what is needed to the model so the top is properly riggable without warping. I simply cannot offer a refund for a finished commissions. I leave it to both of these clients to let me know whether the solutions I've outlined are worth moving forward with. Once again, I sincerely apologize for the difficulty I have caused, and I hope that this can be resolved in a way that everybody can feel content about the outcome. Sincerely, Mookie. And people replied, stating, Rusty added, I'm proud of you for this, Mookie. You're taking this as a learning experience and you're only going to get better. And it's sad to see that the streamers themselves have gone to such lengths to go against harassment, but the community does it anyways. So this is a very, very messy situation and very big back and forth. I think at the end of the day in this scenario, it's another one of those where it's really great, right? I don't think Mookie is villainous scammer out here that's trying to finesse money out of people, right? I really, really don't think so. Obviously for Thorne and Gibbe, they just want working models. Thorne is out $2,000 and it absolutely sucks to be out that much money, especially if your only way to make money is through streaming. Because again, Thorne mentioned they are physically disabled and chronically ill. Given sympathy to that, right? If you're physically disabled and chronically ill, life is already harder for you, financially speaking, right? In order to to just live and meet a basic quality of living, you have to expend a lot more money than somebody who is able-bodied has to, which is already extremely financially stressful and unfair. And not only that, it also limits the amount of money you can make because your job opportunities are much slimmer due to you being chronically ill and disabled. So I do want to provide sympathy to Thorn as well for this scenario, right? They had this model they've been working on for so long and they were finally going to be able to stream again. And just for them to not receive their model because they couldn't ever get past the XY head rigging angles and they also are out a lot of money. Mookie obviously is well-intentioned in wanting to pay them back, but doesn't change the fact that that $2,000 is out of Thorne's pocket, but they don't have a working VTuber model. In Gebe's case as well, they paid for a model that they wanted and the model came completed. Yes, it does move, but there are some rigging errors and things like that that should have been fixed. Mookie, of course, is very well-intentioned and enthusiastic on fixing the errors, but after two months of no response, I can completely understand why Gibb is also frustrated. I don't think Gibe or Thorne are in the wrong for wanting to correct these issues with Mookie, for Thorne wanting their money back, or at least a good chunk of their money back, because again, the model isn't finished, by the way. There was about 16 hours of 16 to 20 hours of work on it. It was not completed, the rig that is. And for Gibbe, adjustments made to the model so that the model doesn't have bugs, like the neck being really long or the ears being fixed. But also sympathy to Mookie too. They are a beginner rigger who is a university student as well. So on top of just, you know, the commissions they have going on, they also have IRL stressors of school and other things alongside going through a move during all of this as well. I truly think this is just a scenario where Mookie definitely got really in over their head, probably got excited seeing some pretty artwork, wanted to get a crack at rigging the model, and then realized soon that they were in over their head and didn't know really how to kind of go about it. So this does seem like it's a first rodeo for them in terms of doing commissions, but we should definitely provide them grace for that as well. I don't think they're ill-intentioned whatsoever in what they were doing, and it does sound like for both people, Gib and Thorne, they're extremely willing to work things out, try to make the situation better. If you go on Mookie's Twitter and you go take a look, right, Mookie clearly is a very talented artist. They're also a learning rigger as well, but I think a lot of their other rigs look really good. You know, the art is beautiful. Let me find an example rig. They did rig their own model as well, and the model looks beautiful. The rig looks beautiful as well. They're very talented as an artist, and I really don't want this to be a scenario where, like, people don't want to work with them anymore. You know what I mean? From all of this happening, I do think that they're probably young, I'm guessing, if they're a university student, and they're clearly really very talented. I do think that just they need to just work on revising their timeline a little bit, give themselves more time to work on things so that it's a lot less rushed and get a little better understanding of their actual current skill capabilities. But I do think that they are capable of producing beautiful artwork and beautiful rigs and that they just need to communicate a little bit more as well. So what are your thoughts on this entire scenario? What are your thoughts on everything that happened? I really hope everything can just get resolved. I hope Thorne can get their money back. I hope Gib can at least get the changes made to their model that they're 
looking for. And I really hope that Mookie can still continue to get commissions and artwork as well. And hopefully, you know, have a good university career and, and art career as well. Because I don't want to see any harm come towards them through all of this. I know there's like all of this stuff that's happening, etc. But they are very, very talented. And I don't think that this stuff should detract from the amount of talent they have.